Welcome to the Pace Notes, a podcast about all things Porsche. And today we're going to talk about this Raspberry 911T that's been converted to a 3.6 by Rothsport Racing. Greg, what are some of the most interesting things you've heard about this car? Um, well, I mean, it's hard to ignore the, uh, the original rose red paint, right? Mm-hmm. Paint code 45. Uh, you don't see a lot of this paint code. Um, you know, a lot of people call it raspberry, rose red. Uh, first time I've ever seen it was actually at uh, Rensport on one of the uh, race team's RSs. Just an amazing color. It's uh, it's like Bahia red with a little bit of pink. So one of my favorite things about Porsches in general is the colors. Um, and ra- just to see a raspberry car, uh, you know, when we found it, it was that was like the biggest draw to this car. And then, kind of f- looking further into it, I was looking at the uh, kind of the build and everything done to it. It looked because you know from the picture, it just looked like a a stock three a seventy three T, which in rose red, that's awesome just to start off yeah. with. And it's original paint, so I saw that I was like, oh wow, not fully believing that mm-hmm. it was original paint because half the time people say it's original paint, and then you go there. So it's two but, or three panels respray. I mean, this thing's measuring at three to four mils in every single panel. So yeah. it's just awesome. And then kind of looking further into it, it's a 3.6 liter um, conversion that was done by Rossport Racing. Um, and that at first, the 3.6 liter I was a little hesitant on because that's a lot of power going into a, a 73. It's a big motor going in there. Yeah. And so I was looking at that and I was like, okay, well, is it going to be overpowering this car? Um so kind of uh, there's all these things that it was, had been done to it and you know if they're done right which is hearing that it was done by Rossport there was no evidence that it was done by Rossport sure. at the time um you know, Gamrock's been in the game for a while uh, so he it's coming out of his shop it's it, it's going to be nice but we've seen our fair share of three sixes mm-hmm. shoehorned into SCs uh, not a lot of long hoods but um, definitely a lot of engine upgrades that were just done by novices or those mm-hmm. that are working out of their own garage or a small shop, and this completely is evidence in the other direction. It's just so nice. It drives smooth. You wouldn't think it was a 3.6 until you mash it. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you get these cars in here and you spend just as much time undoing things than you'd spend on basically doing it in the first place. To oh, it, yeah. you know. So, But, no, I mean, this car, getting into it and driving it, I was like, wow, this thing is solid. It's, it's an awesome yeah. car. It's got the, the, it's got the 930 brakes, which we'll get to later. Mm-hmm. Um, it's got... Uh, very nice suspension setup, um, and I mean it, it, it's just an all-out, yeah. altogether nice car. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, kind of going through some of the build points, uh, it's got the 3.6 liter engine. Right. Um, installed by Rossport. Mm-hmm. Um, Not the easiest thing to put in there either. No. Um, you know, you've got to you've got to fabricate all those new harnesses because mm-hmm. you're talking about having to put in a DME in there. Yeah. Uh, so engine management that obviously was not in a car from 73. Uh, so you got a lot of wiring to do. Um, well, none of your engine tin is going to match. So you got to redo engine tin. You've got a bunch of brackets to put in. There's a whole lot of minutia that goes into putting a motor in of that mm-hmm. magnitude into a long hood. And so matted to the, the 3.6, we've got the, the 915 transmission out of the 911SC that mm-hmm. uh, Gamroth went through himself. Right. Um, basically just overhauling the entire thing, replacing. Yeah, it was <laughs> team Gamroth or whoever did it, yeah. um, but replacing anything needed. So, I mean, transmission sh- transmission, sh- transmission shifts great. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it, it's a well-working gearbox. Um, and, you know, it, it's left original. You know, it's so, it's the original shift assembly. So, um, you know, bushing's been done, shift tunnels, all that's um, been sorted. But you still get that, that original slop, yep. you know, uh, instead of having everything's got a Wevo on it these days or a mm-hmm. brand shift. And they're great. I love them. But there's something about being able to have that extra long throw made it to a 3.6, which is crazy. Um, yeah. Just normally, I would never. I well, and, and finding cars like this, sometimes we're, we, we find them or we hear about them and we hear everything that's done to them. And you automatically think, okay, what else can we do when we get it before, we, before we're ready to sell it? What else do we want to do to make it better? And, you know, I had some of those, like the Wevo in my mind. I had yeah. some, a, bunch, a bunch of stuff that I was thinking, okay, this is stuff that we've done in the past that are great. Mm-hmm. Um, so going to see this car, that's what I was looking at. And yeah. when I got in this car and started driving it, I mean, it's just so cool because it's such a sleeper car, but yet performs so well. So I was like, we're not doing 
We don't no. need to do anything to this car besides doing you know, a service and getting everything, making sure it's operating correctly. Right. Um, so it's just, I mean, it's just an awesome car in general. And, yeah. the, and the transmission actually has a guard LSD in it as well, right? Right. Yeah, it's uh, that ZF style LSD that you'd see mm -hmm. on these. I think it was a 50-80 split. Um, so really good ratio um, for this gearbox and this this build just makes makes it super comfortable. I mean, this, this is a car that you could take touring and still take on the track. Mm -hmm. And I think one concern that people might have when they hear about a 3.6 in what's meant to be a 2.4 car would be the cooling of the engine. Right. Um, the car actually has dual front fender oil coolers, right. which is pretty awesome. Um, and I mean, the car, after driving the car, we drove it, I drove it for probably like an hour, probably three hours one day, and thing was staying at around 180, not even touching 200 yeah. the whole time. So I mean, it, it's just, it's, it's a really nice setup, and it was just definitely, you notice that it was done by someone who really knows what they're doing. Sure. Yeah, three six on a single oil cooler is just really stretching it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't like to run that extra oil cooler on the driver's side. Um, they have to either run hard lines around the front or mm -hmm. they have to go in through the body, and it's just a, a pain. Mm -hmm. So you could tell somebody actually cared about what they were doing in this build. Yeah, and, and the, the 3.6 liter was actually sourced by Gamroth uh, or Raw Sport Racing, yeah. whoever, whoever did it there. Um, so And it, it's in perfect shape. Um, mm -hmm. That was one thing that I was looking at, and... You know, I didn't know about the 3.6, like a stock 3.6 in there. I don't even know, you know, we're not really too sure about how, you know, I don't believe the engine's completely stock in this. Right. Um, I bet you they did some modifications to the engine because I feel like it would be a lot more, uh, a lot rough, a lot more rough of a ride if, yeah. if it was just a regular 3.6. Yeah, it's got shot. a bit of a tune. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the original documentation, which we've got, you know, pages and pages of receipts from Rossport. I mean, it's, it just goes on and on. Um, and you can see, you know, you've got Steve Wong chip, and there's a little bit of custom tune yeah. built into that. So it's 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 definitely a, a sleeper for sure. Oh yeah, and then uh, also instead of the stock, it's a 964 engine that's in the car. So and and added to that is the um, SSI exhaust, which is right. which which is awesome, and it's the old school SSI exhaust, which is the thick nice flange. To hear. Yep. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and going from there, uh, moving on to suspension on the car. Um, it's set up with Bilstein HDs, mm -hmm. uh, and then we got Weltmeister sway bars. Right. And I, th I think those are, what, what size are those, 22? And then um, 22 and uh, 22 up front. Usually we'll go a little bigger up front, and then 19s in the mm -hmm. rear. Okay. And the uh, torsion bars are 22 and 28. Yeah. Um, which, is a, which is a nice setup for these yeah. cars. That's, that's, that's pretty normal for these cars, and uh, it, it just, I mean, the thing handles great. Um, and all of that... Um, yeah, and that's yeah. Yeah, there's there's a lot of work. I mean, you've got a you're putting a three six into an extremely light car, so the next thing you want to think about is braking. Yeah, and they managed to stick in <laughs> nine thirty turbo calipers uh, in this thing, which you know to to get them to fit. Normally they would fit in a fifteen inch wheel, but you're talking about a long a long uh, a long hood, so. Yeah. Trying to get that to work, they had to machine the face of it down. They had to machine, which is scary to think about in the first place, because you think about 930 brakes that are those iconic brakes, and people love them. They're finned for a reason. And you're thinking about someone cutting into them, and that's another concern that I had. I mean, the, yeah. whole, the whole thing in general, like if it wasn't done correctly, you could be looking at a nightmare. But yeah. everything was done so well. I mean, even the, even the the brakes, they were machined, and you can tell they had little machine marks and all that. Machine marks are consistent oh and nice. God. It looks like it was done, and it was. It was done purposefully. Mm -hmm. and, and to get that to work, you know, there's a lot of little, t you know, tricks and nuances in, in that. So, you know, I had to modify uh, the inner CVs so they could actually uh, allow for 930 stub axles. Mm -hmm. So then you can manage to be able to fit 930 rotors on there. And so there's, there's a lot of things that go into play here. It's not just, you know, bolt on some <laughs> 930 calipers and, and make it run. You know, you have to have a custom caliper or a custom uh, rotor up front. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have to, to machine down your rotors to 305 mm -hmm. millimeter, I believe. So... Um, yeah, a lot of little, a lot of little nuances in here that, you know, when you, you start adding up the receipts, you can see. And and you know, one of the coolest things I think one of the coolest things on this car, um, is it has, what looks like fifteen by six inch wheels, mm -hmm. just, you know, which is deep which sixes is, or no, flat sixes, flat sixes, which is normal for a seventy three. So you'd think they're stock, but mm -hmm. um, the rear wheels have actually been modified to. To, miss, to sevens, right. So and that's that was just cool. It was a cool yeah. little feature, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I love that um, because it, it really just fits that sleeper look on the car. Because right, I, that was one thing when I was looking at it. I was worried about. It. I was like, okay, six inch wheels with a three point six. 
how is that gonna, right. how's that going to be? And it's done the way of like the 7R, but obviously yeah. 7R would be, you know, have the, the same facing as the Deep 6, mm -hmm. but then that wouldn't match the front. So, yeah, going, going that way is really a, a smart way to fill out that wheel well, yeah. especially when you're running a 3.6. Yeah, you can tell. I mean, th this is, there was so much thought that was actually put into this car instead mm -hmm. of just like forcing a 3.6 in a car. It was, you know, not it, everything underneath the car has really been touched. Um, but from the top, it looks completely stock. Mm -hmm. Um, so moving on, interior-wise, one of one of the cool things to me is the dash is completely original in this car. Um, it's the original dash that came in the car, and it's in perfect shape. Yeah. Uh, the door the door panels are in again great shape. Door um, pockets are tight. Yeah. Um, it's a shocking you never find that. So and the only thing they changed out was re with some Recaro. What kind of seats are they? The Recaro. Um, they're the LXF, I believe, leather. Uh, leather bolstered or leather kind of sports yeah, seat. They're comfy seats. Yeah. So those and the Schroth, um, the Schroth harnesses. harnesses. Yeah, and the harness guide mm -hmm. bar in the back. Um, Which that's the only way really from the outside. I mean, if you're if, if you know Porsches, the 930 brakes you can tell. But really, from looking at the car, it's the only way to really tell that the car has been kind of hot rodded. Yeah. Is, is the the Schroth harnesses and and the seats. Um, yeah, it's it, a little extra bracing too, which mm -hmm. is nice, especially when you have a, a larger motor in there like that. Um, little subtle things, if you look, you can see the tachometer and the speedometer are changed out. Yeah. So those are both electric to, obviously, uh, a long wheelbase or a long hood would have, uh, they would all be uh, mechanical. And 964 was electric, so they, electronic, so they modified that, put those in there. Um, other than that, you could tell that they highlighted what was stock mm -hmm. and what was original and really tried to blend vintage and modern. And so, you know, the suspension isn't crazy. There's no coilovers. No. Um, there's just, you know, a nice set of, of, of new torsion bars, uh, new bushings, you know, rebuild the uh, spring plates. It's just, you know, and dial when things that, in. When, that, when the suspension is done by someone who knows what they're doing and keep it torsion bars and all that kind of stuff, you can set these things up really nice. Right. Um, and this car just, I mean, it handles great. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just an awesome build. And uh, I mean, looking at kind of the receipts going back, he's had about forty thousand dollars of receipts just from uh, receipts from Rossport. Right. Um, so they obviously did a significant amount of work. The backstory behind this car: I was talking to the the owner who did all the work, um, and basically he was telling me that when he first contacted Rossport, uh, he said he was talking to Gamroth, and mm -hmm. he, he he told him about the car and said, "Hey, I want to do a build on this car," and. Cam Roth was like, I don't think your car's your car's probably not nice enough to do it because it was in two thousand. I think it was done in two thousand three, four, or yeah. something like that. And he's like, your pro car's probably not nice enough to do it because he's looking at a seventy three nine eleven, and how many mm -hmm. of them, how many of them are in good shape? Yeah. And he had that motor in mind, right? Yeah, he had a three point six liter in, in mind, and he's and he's like, well, really, I mean, your car's probably rusted and been mm -hmm. hit or whatnot, and he's like, well, let me show you the car first. So he drives the car over there, and uh, and and. And basically, Gamroth starts looking at it, or all, all of his guys start looking at it. They're like, are you sure you want to do this this car? And now the problem is the car's too nice and too untouched yeah. to do it to it. And he was just saying, you know what? I just want a car that runs great, and I want to have some fun with it. He didn't care. So uh, he basically committed to the build. And uh, even to this day, he said that he was telling me that when he was first talking about selling the car, I guess he reached out to Rossport and uh, Jeff wanted the car um but wanted the original engine back to put it all back together yeah um so but and, and i guess he didn't he didn't end up obviously he didn't end up buying it um but yeah so it was kind of a kind of a neat story behind it and you know it was kind of cool that you know jeff actually had uh jeff gamroth actually had a, a tie to it and, and right. liked it um but yeah i mean one of my favorite things about this car is it's just not very often do you find a car that's all original paint to start off with but yet the car that is all original paint and very original is also hot rodded into a 3.6 monster. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's an interesting blend because usually you see, you know, if you focus on original paint, mm -hmm. then you've got original powertrain and it's just a Concours car. Yeah. And the other way around, if you've got a hot rod, then you're not caring about paint and it's either dinged up, it's scratched up, or it's just a full repaint. So yeah. it's it's a great blend and really lends towards it being a sleeper. I mean, yeah. it's still wearing the 2.4 badge. Well, and the cool thing. Hilarious. Yeah, and the, and, the, and the cool thing is, I mean, I, I think that was the whole goal behind the guy. I was like, hey, I don't want anyone from the outside to really know mm -hmm. what's in this thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, one of the cool things is, I mean, even if someone, you know, whoever got the car wanted to repaint it because they wanted perfect paint, at least they know they're painting over the original paint, which is the perfect base. Right. Um, 
and I mean the the color. I mean the fact that it's original paint and raspberry is is kind of ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> and and you know you've got a straight car. You're not dealing mm. with any filler, dents, uh, body damage. I mean what you see is what you get, mm -hmm. and it's it's thin paint just like you'd see from the factory. There's definitely some uh, chipping going on there, yeah. and and you know road rash is just what you'd expect out of. And the car has the car originally has ninety two thousand miles. Yeah, you know I, most cars that. A lot of cars that we have that have thirty thousand miles or, or forty thousand miles don't have original paint, so it's just yeah. it's just a weird concept, but it's 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 pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I mean it, it it in general, I mean the, the car is awesome. Yeah, I mean my favorite parts being that I mean you get into it and you handle it and it feels like a car that's forty six mm -hmm. years old, but it's been put together in a way that you know it still has you know some modern finesse to it. And you can add a few creature comforts like a Bluetooth radio and, yeah. uh, you know, if you want to throw a Wevo shifter on there or something like that and have a tighter uh, tighter shift throw, um, you could easily daily this thing. Oh. And I would have no problems doing it. Those seats, comfortable. You know, you get in some of these vintage racing buckets and it's not going to tour. <laughs> you know, you go on a weekend drive and your back's cramped. Yeah, and then one of the other things that when I first got in it and I started taking off and we were using like a small little neighborhood, so I just kind of barely i didn't even get on it just to kind of roll out of the neighborhood i like just started rolling out and it felt i felt like i was driving a, a 2.4 cis just yeah. super smooth and i didn't and at that point i was like oh this thing probably doesn't it doesn't feel like it has too much power and then the second i got on it it just jeez it, it was crazy yeah it's got power all through the band but it's not like throaty mm -hmm. like we've done a lot of three six and three eight builds and depending on what the customer is looking for i mean it's you could tell it's been built mm -hmm. and it's loud this it has a little, you know, you know, it has a different note than a two four. Something's right. different, but it's not so off putting that it just seems like a monster. Like mm -hmm. you can put around in this thing and you know shift in the low ranges and be fine. Yeah, you know, you're not going to be out of power. We took it to the show the other day and we pulled up and people just didn't even expect to, anything to be in it other than a two point four. <laughs> yes, so. exactly. So you know, as we're filming this, the car is for sale. Uh, might not be when this gets posted. Who knows? But feel free, give us a call if you have any questions. Email us. Uh, follow, subscribe, share us with your car groups. Click the link below. Click the link below. Thank you. Thank Hi, you for bye watching bye. the Pace Notes. <laughs> <laughs>